I've made acid-base titrations and their calculations seem uh, pretty darn simple. And in a certain way they are, but there's a lot of nitty-gritty that goes into the calculations that involves neutralization reactions. So it's important that we get a feel for these as we work them by actually looking at some of the classic examples of acid-base titrations. They always work the same way. Um, let's see, let's start with 50 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar HCl titrated with 0, 10, 25, and 50 milliliters of 0 0.2 molar KOH. What is the pH along the way? So that's a classic titration problem in that you have a certain amount of acid to start. You're titrating it with a certain amount of strong base of known concentration. And you're adding known volumes to it along the way. And I want to know the pH as we do this. We know, as a model of this experiment, what's taking place. Basically, for the longest time, we're going to have a beaker filled with protons. And we're going to calculate the pH as the analytical concentration of those protons after neutralization. We will get to a point, though, where the pH is going to be equal to 7, because that's when I'm going to have exactly the same amount of strong acid as strong base, and therefore I have a bucket of water. And then finally, we're going to get to a point where I have excess strong base after neutralization, and the actual pH calculation is based upon the amount of Cb. So I've got three regions here that I have to do my calculations in, and you can be guaranteed that for each of these calculations I do, I'm either going to be here, here, or there. So let's do the first one. What is the pH at zero milliliters of KOH added. Well, the first thing we do is we need to get rid of our spectators to see that I've got protons there and I've got hydroxides there. So this is just a really simple calculation involving strong acid and strong base. And you'll notice that as I do this particular problem here, there's no strong base to start. So the concentration of the strong acid is, well, there it is. It's 0.1 molar. The H plus is equal to the CA, which is equal to 0.1 molar, and therefore the pH is equal to 1. So I know that this very first data point right here corresponds to a pH of 1. Now it gets a little bit more ornery because I have to do neutralizations. What is the pH at 10? milliliters of 0 0.2 molar hydroxide added. To do a neutralization reaction like this, the following steps are involved. I write down the amount of protons and hydroxides in a neutralization reaction. So the amount of protons has to be given as an actual amount and not as a concentration, because concentrations don't cancel each other out. The moles cancel each other out. If I got 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar, that corresponds to having 0.005 moles of protons, because 0.05 times 0.1 is 0.005. The amount of hydroxide added, well, that's going to be 0.01 times 0.2. That's 0.002 moles of hydroxide. This now becomes a limiting reagent problem. I've got moles of proton, moles of hydroxide. I've got excess of the protons. So I'm going to subtract the limiting reagent, 0.002 minus 0.002. I'm adding 0.002 of the water. And when it's all done, I have a beaker containing 0.003 moles of the protons, no moles of hydroxide, and I've got some water that I don't care about. So what's the proton concentration? 
it is equal to the moles of the protons, which is 0 0.003, but divided by the volume that I have. And people always forget this step. I've added 10 milliliters to 50 milliliters. So this is dividing it by 0 0.06 liters. And that's my pH. Notice my pH in this particular range here is going to be very strong because it's all strong acid. In fact, it's a pH of 1.4. Well, let's keep cranking. You notice what a pain this is. Here I've got my pH at 25 milliliters. So I write down protons plus hydroxides goes to form water. And I had 0 0.005 of these to start. And now I've got to figure out how much of the hydroxide I have to start. That is going to be 0.2 times, oh, 0 0.025. Right now, you probably want to pull your calculator out. But after you get used to this, you'll realize that the math is always pretty much the same in terms of multiplying molarities times volumes. And you get your number of moles. It's 0 0.005. This obviously is a point where I'm at the equivalence. And we know what the equivalence answer is. It's going to be 7, but let's just play it out. I'm going to subtract my limiting reagent. And I'm going to add that amount to the water side. Not that it matters, because it's just water. And notice what I have when I've added 25 milliliters of hydroxide. I've got no protons in solution, no hydroxides in solution, and a bunch of extra water. Oh, it's a solution of water. Oh, it's pH 7. Now, by the way, it isn't that I have no protons and hydroxides in solution. It's that the only source of protons and hydroxides is from my KW. And that's about 10 to the minus 7 mole, molar of each at room temperature. So I've taken myself from having a pH of 1 to a pH of 1.4 at 10 milliliters to a pH of 7 at 25 milliliters, and then I have my last case. I'm going to have 50 milliliters added. Here I have protons plus hydroxides goes to make water. This is going to be 0 0.005. I'm adding 50 milliliters of 0.2, so that's 0 0.01. That's a lot of hydroxide, a lot of excess hydroxide. And so my limiting reagent is now the protons And when I'm done, I have only hydroxide left. How much hydroxide? The amount of hydroxide is equal to 0 0.005 moles. And I have to divide it by the volume. What's the volume? Well, I had 50 milliliters of hydroxide added. But I started with 50 milliliters of the protons. So this becomes a 1 liter solution here. And I now have a strong base problem to work. And when I finished with it, and I run it all the way through to calculate pOH, which is about 1.3, it will make a pH equal to 12.7. And sure enough, I'm way up here at a strong base case. Notice what happened when I did this problem. Here I was, way back here at the start. I had made it sound so simple. Strong acid, pH 7, strong base, as I worked my way through the titration. The problem is that these are neutralization reactions. And neutralization reactions require incredible care given to the calculation of the number of moles, incredible care given to the um, finding the, the um, limiting reagent, incredible care given to managing the amount of the volumes. So even though mathematically, when it's all done, calculating CA or CB is not a difficult thing, this neutralization part has to be done in every step in a titration. And as a result, it's always a challenge to make sure that you keep your math working. The good news, if you're going to find any in any of this, is that you know about what the answer has to be when you're done. When you start, if you're below the equivalence point, your pH better be around 1 or 2. When you're through, if it's strong base, it better be way up around 13 or 14. And when you're at the equivalence point, it must be 7.